So actually, I'm doing my postdoctoral research in Lisbon, and I'm working to tackle a very important issue in Africa, that is the sleeping sickness. So this disease is transmitted by a tsetse fly in Africa that beat you to uptake the blood and to feed itself. But at the same time, this fly is contaminated and infected by trypanosome as mosquito for malaria, for instance. So when they uptake the blood to feed itself, they deliver some parasite inside your blood. The first part of the disease is totally asymptomatic. You will not feel it, you will not have symptom. But after several months or several years, depending on the strain of the parasite, eventually the parasite will reach the ending of the disease, the brain, where the symptoms start to appear, relating with sleeping sickness. Meaning that the person that will be infected will be, we call as a zombie state, not totally awake, but not totally sleeping. With this sleeping pattern disturbing completely because the parasite affect the brain and the circadian rhythm of the person. And so the people will sleep the same amount of time, but will sleep all over the day, like little small nap, wake up, and small nap. So, and this is fatal for a human 100% of the time if it's not treated. Fortunately, but unfortunately, we do have drugs to treat this disease. But because we have to target a very sensitive organ, that is the brain where the parasite is, you need a very aggressive uh, and difficult to administrate the drugs to reach the brain. And this is responsible for 10% of the death when you treat patients. So it's kind of unacceptable in medicine nowadays. So we really want to change this and find a new way to tackle this problem and to find a new strategy to cure this disease. During the transmission, so from the blood to the stomach of the state of light, the two environments of the host are completely different. So the parasite adapt very quickly to this response. You need to change totally its gene expression, the shape, everything, the metabolism. So for this, you need like, let's say, like an orchestra conductor. Like you have an orchestra with different instruments, you need to synchronize them to do something well. So in trypanosome is the same thing. They need to change the environment, they need to change response fast. So we strongly believe that there is an orchestra conductor inside the trypanosome to organize all of this changing. And so recently it was found in different organisms, but even in humans, when the genome expressed not only protein, and so mRNA that encoding for protein, but also non-coding RNA. This is a new field on biology. And we strongly believe that this non-coding RNA that is really important for many diseases in human could be the orchestra conductor for this differentiation process. So what we have done, we have sequenced with the new technology that was used to sequence the genome, the human genome. We use this technology to sequence the transcriptome, so the expression of the gene inside our parasite and we identified for the first time a thousand of this London coding RNA. So it was for us a great discovery. And now we are working on this to see if there are an effect for differentiation to the insect stages. The transmission is a good strategy to avoid the spreading of the disease. Of course, there is other reservoir of the parasite. Not only human are infected by trypanosome, but also animal, wild animal. And this is very difficult to control this. So our strategy is more broad strategy because we block inside the parasite the differentiation process. So this is common for all the reservoir. If it's human or, or animals, they will need to go from the blood, even if it's animal or human, to the tsetse fly. And this involves a complete remodeling and in the same process as it is in human or in animal. So by doing this new strategy for treatment, targeting this differentiation process inside the parasite, we target all the reservoir. And we believe that targeting the whole reservoir, you will not have more trypanosome, the parasite. And so you cannot infect more tsetse fly that would contaminate over human and animals. When I was a kid, 10 years old, I remember this very quietly, this scene. I was with my brother in a, in a, in a car with uh, friends of my parents, and they asked the typical question, what do you want to do for your life after school? And I don't know why, I don't know why, I, I, I reply immediately, but very specifically, I want to work for CNRS. This is like weird because this is like a French institute to found and to, to found research in France. And it's, it's not, I didn't say like, I want to be a researcher, I want to work for CNRS. Actually, I'm still not working for CNRS, but I'm still hoping to do it. And after about my project, it's more like, 
chance, luck to get this project, but also I remember a friend of mine went to Africa where he was a kid also with his parents and he came back with his story about tsetse fly and I didn't know what it is at the time, big fly all over the bus and he has to fight them with socks. And I remember interesting, they say there is parasite inside that can infect you and I say, wow, yeah, this is fantastic. And more in my degree, what, what come to me is like interaction, this is really nice. It's like parasite and host interaction, they depend to each other. One cannot survive without the other one. There's like an exchange and you, I really want to understand how it works.